I got an idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna call my friend by surprise, and he just started a CBD company, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna intro it with this. Hi, Larry. Hey, uh, you are yeah. currently on our um, IS3 podcast, going out to thousands of people, and we noticed that you have opened up a CBD store. Would you like to promote it live on the air? I would love to. Go for it. Are we live on the air? Yeah, right now. <laughs> okay. Got to make it yeah, up as you go. A CBD store with CBD uh, tinctures and oils and gummies and pet CBD drops and gummies and uh, treats for the pets, uh, ink, cream, all kinds of stuff. And, of course, the best place to go is, of course, www dot g-l-a-c-b-d dot com any questions absolutely what do you what is cbd for what what are you using it for oh the the, the cbd yes cbd interestingly enough uh of all the customers that have been coming out really was skeptical about all this stuff in the beginning until now uh i've had people come in like from their 20s up to death I mean seriously and these people are coming in with aches and pains I got I had some uh, athletes come in that had injured themselves the stuff is just it takes away all the pain it seems to I don't know I don't know how it's doing it but it just seems to be a miracle you know how I've always had an ache in my back Larry yep uh, I went ahead and thought well alright I'm going to try this stuff and I'm just uh, two uh, things full in the one in the morning, one at night. It's gone. I mean, it's just totally gone. And that almost sounds like, you know, well, I'm trying to sell this stuff to you, but it's absolutely true. And anyone that's used it, if you ask anyone that's used CBD, they'll tell you the same thing. It gets rid of their aches, their pains. It, it uh, uh, helps with anxiety, uh, with uh, mood swings. I don't know how it does it, but it does it. All right, go ahead and throw us that website one more time. Well, not only should you go to the website, but right now I got a coupon on it. Everything is wholesale, fifty percent off, and so That's it's www.glacbt.com. All right. Well, thanks for your call. Yeah. We really appreciate it. You are currently on right, the. Thank you, Larry. You are currently on the IS3 podcast. Thanks for calling. Awesome. Have a good day. Okay, you too. Bro, he's such a... That was awesome. That was, really, that was like a perfect commercial. It really was. Like he, perfect he, commercial. Fucking coordinator scribble. <laughs> Everyone's going to look around. Who the fuck is that? He's my you coordinator just, from Olympic. <laughs> you still, you'll do that around dead. You'll probably get arrested for being crazy. <laughs> He's a Windows Key Warrior. <laughs> Who's this fucking maniac yell, running around saying scribble? Somebody get Take somebody get this revive. man a coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, take it, revives. Can't beat him. <laughs> Alright, welcome to IS3 Podcast on Scribble. I'm here with Intent and Cooper, and today our main topics are what, Intent? Thunderstorm. Sounds good. So I have a topic of, uh, I had a topic on Olympus and I forgot what it was, but I will, it will swing back around to me. Uh, and then another topic we had was this experimental head transplant that's going around. It's been going around for years. I saw, I saw it like five years ago, but apparently there's this guy, he's got, let me look up the article again, but this guy has, uh, like multiple sclerosis or something like that. It's a nerve thing where it kills all the, it starts killing all your nerves and tissue and everything. So uh, he can't, pretty much he's paralyzed for life. Um, I'm going to look up the article. It says, man set to, here it is. Um, <clears throat> man set to undergo world's first head transplant, head transplant, wow, I can't see transplant. Man, man set to undergo world's first head transplant back out after finding love and becoming a dad. Uh, a 33-year-old man is suffering from a dis- uh, disabling disease who volunteered to have his head transplanted into another person's body has pulled out of the experiment operation. Oh, that's no fun. Uh, 
This guy has mus muscle wasting conditions. Uh, warning. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Weird Nig Hoffman disease. Weird Ward Hoffman. Ward Hoffman's disease. How's this spelled? W E R D N I G hyphen Hoffman. Two ends. I never heard that word in my entire Which destroys muscles and nerves. Uh, which destroys muscles and nerves in the brain, spinal cord, and according to a national organization of rare diseases, um, feels he has no other options outside of watching his body body lose its ability for movement. Um, he signed up in 2015 to participate in the world's first head transplant, conducted by colorful Italian surgeon Dr. Sergio Canavaro, who would attempt to fuse this guy's head into the spinal cord of another body. Um, here you have a patient who is dying, dying, dying every every single day. Canavero said, uh, "This commitment to the surgery is an entry." Said to the commitment of an interview in the Canadian's National Post in 2016, "What's going to happen if I do nothing?" Uh, that was a quote. Uh, the procedure was initially I, uh... scheduled for 2016. Uh, but had to had to push back the date while they continue preparations. Um, are we li are we live right now? Yes. Uh, oh, it hasn't been able to. All right. Uh, I cannot wait for a surgery forever. The condition seems stable. Uh, guy lives in Florida. Um, happy to say he's married, children, and he backed out. But yeah, I saw this a long time ago. That I honestly do not think it would work at all. Honestly, I don't really see how that can work either because, you know, how the organs work. There's no way how they can keep a man headless alive for a transplant like that. And, like, yeah. Or, like, bring back to life if they remove a head and then place that back onto another person. I don't see how that's going to work no matter what. Well, I mean, you, to do the head, like, you have to sever the spinal cord and the brainstem. Yeah. And and there's so many nerves in there. Like it, it would take a long time to do. The surgery would take longer than a body could live, uh, dead so to speak, or on ice, um, yeah. to be functional again. Because you can only, uh, you can only live with four minutes without air. Uh, yeah. Before there's brain damage, or three minutes, three or four minutes without without uh, any oxygen until there's brain damage. So, if you can take a head off, put it on another body, and reconnect all the nerve endings and everything in four minutes, then bravo, you know? Yeah, but honestly, I don't see how they can definitely do that within four minutes, because just how you said, there's so many nerves and yeah. all that, just in that alone. But, <clears throat> like you, you, could, you could do that to an arm or something easily. They do it all yeah. the time. No, um, arm transplants are normal. Yeah, but when you're when you're doing something as sensitive as the, it's not even the head; it's the spinal cord and the brainstem. Those are the those are yeah. the sensitive things, you know, because everything else is pretty much just the just the cut and paste. You know, you got your esophagus, exactly. you got your you got your windpipe, uh, and then your um, wherever that with that vital vein in your neck is. They, that's that's all everyday common things. Uh, but then you have but all the nerves like there's hundreds of nerves in the brainstem and then reconnecting it to a head or to the an existing spinal cord so you know that it w i don't think i it actually would ever almost work. uh i actually almost cut my uh jugular. head off no almost didn't. no no not my head I almost uh, cut my jugular vein in my neck uh were you off your medication <laughs> again no, no, Jesus! I was actually oh, so, oh, so you did this on your medication? I don't think your medication is working out for you. I don't, <laughs> no. I don't this no, shit. I don't, I, don't, I don't take anything. I don't take anything. Well, I'm starting oh. to think you start. I'm starting to think you should. <laughs> so, um, this was when I a few years ago, but I was actually working. I was actually building a horse barn for an elderly lady. Oh, it's um, painful. I actually cut my neck and my face open. Um, so th I was building a horse barn for this elder lady. I was down welding. I took my hood up, came up, and in the back of my pickup, 
um, there's this trim, right? And right. so I looked up at, I, and I looked up toward, when I opened my hood, my head was faced up toward the sun, so I couldn't see. And somehow I, in that process, I took a few steps forward and ran right into it. In that Ow, that yeah. sounds painful. That and that looks painful. You know it it actually looks, for for a cut on your neck, that actually looks really clean. Um, the, the, the part is, it never really even hurt. Beyond, never. Huh. Um, I never really faint feel felt. Can't talk. <laughs> Didn't even feel never any never rough. felt faint pain. <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> felt any pain. In that. I mean, no, I've, I mean, I could I've actually tell my neck was coven, but yeah, I've actually done that a few times with uh, my hand. I've cut my I've cut the same hand open twice in the webbing, and mm-hmm. I've lost all muscle strength between my thumb and index finger on that hand. And in, in so nowadays I can't even, I can't look or I can't look at anything or do anything that involves pain or cutting near the fingers because it psychs me out, you know, they, it was, it was just me. It was me being stupid and just not, not doing things properly and cut my hand open twice. You had to get stitches both times, two different times, same hand. And so now like even just talking about it now, like I'm I'm moving all around everywhere because I'm I'm like you know I can't uh, I can't do anything that involves that. Like I have really uh, freak you out. Uh, no, I never it didn't freak me out. Just now that I think like thinking back on it, it freaks me out. And um, I see. I see. like I, I have a I have a video um, changing my lawnmower oil, and I had to use a tool. To tighten it because I don't have any strength in my in my hand because all I I barely have any nerve like I barely feel anything just in this certain area and I have zero strength anywhere in that hand so I I can't do any kind of major strength strength worthy so, something that I need muscle for in my hand you know like rubbing one out or right messing with Cooper ants or you know. I had to use my other hand. <laughs> but, uh, and so, like, there's a video, like, I'm using a tool to do this, and people are like, why are you using a tool to tighten that? You're not supposed to do that. I was like, well, I don't have any strength in this hand. Yeah, we okay. use the other hand. It's like, the other hand's holding the camera. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so that's kind of, so anything to deal with that. And toes. Oh, I can't do anything with, I, uh, I can't, toenails. <laughs> I can't oh, do anything really? with it. Really? Then, uh, really? Yep. Hmm. And like uh, the SpongeBob episode where they're moving the couch and and uh, Rams Squidward's toenail up. Oh, I, I can't watch it. I can't so do anything are you, with that. Are you scared of toenails? No, I'm not scared at all. It just okay. You're just talking a little, like, cringy moments. Yeah, cringy oh, stuff. Like, is, shit like shit. Like, yeah. Oh, I don't know. What you're like you mm-hmm. can like hear that shit happen when you're watching a video. So yeah. So, uh, you know, I I can't do it. I can't do it. So, yeah. However, I can watch Doctor Pimple Popper all day long. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> kind of like some of that shit gets gross, but at the same time, it's like yeah. yeah kind of they, cool I'm watch. not. I'm not a big fan of the. I'm not a big fan of like the big cyst ones where it's like mountains of nasty pus and stuff coming out. Like I, I like the, uh, I like the splatter ones, like the the homemade ones where they're popping in their ear and it goes and it gets all over and everything. That's like just the quick pops is what I like, but the whole oozing and no, that, that. I like the big, I make the nasty ones. Like I think those are cool. Well, the, the cool big nasty shit. ones are cysts, and oh yeah, which is, yeah, which is different from a pimple, right? So, but like when people have like the big pimples and they pop them and it just get, and done, those are kind of cool. Speaking of which, there was a, uh, I saw some video a while back of. Um, there was a guy that, or his kid, he had a, he had a spider bite on his arm and it was all inflamed and everything. And he had a bandaid and stuff on it for a while. And then finally, um, he, they pulled a bandaid out so he can kind of relieve some pressure and they pulled this, the po I guess it was the poison or dead tissue or whatever, but they were squeezing and squeezing and nothing could happen. And he took these tweezers and he grabbed a hold of like this, it looked like green, it looked like mucus. So, yeah. He pulled out this green 
whatever stuff. And like just right after that, it just popped and that, mm. and that was it. So, I closed Discord because I'm not going to fucking look at that, you assholes. <laughs> uh, um, you know, something about that stuff. I wonder if that stuff gets, you know, this is kind of off topic. But I wonder if that stuff gets monetized on YouTube. I don't know. I mean, I there might be a special licensing for it, I guess. Or a special... I, it could be filed under health. Because you yeah. know how there's absolutely no nudity or or attempted nudity, like some some bikinis or or a, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. some some people get demonetized because like their bra strap shows or something. Right. They, right. But then you can, but then you can have a video on teaching new mothers how to connect a baby to their nipple for for breastfeeding. But you mm-hmm. can completely have that. You can have complete show because it'd be under. I guess it'd be under health and wellness. And medical terminology. Yeah. So it's kind of kind of like that. So even though breastfeeding is like, first of all, I have nothing against it. You know, if you want to breastfeed in, in the middle of the dinner, in the middle of a restaurant, you know, have at it. Like you're doing the right thing. You're feeding your baby, you know, do, you know, you do you. It doesn't affect me at all. And it actually, it actually, I'm with the people they get mad when other people will say, oh, that's disgusting. You know, why are you doing that in public? It's like, first off, they're feeding their kid like they're supposed to do. They're not taking them out to a restaurant where they're eating greasy-ass fucking burgers. All right? Exactly. So, yeah. you know, mind your fucking business. So, you know, they're they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're feeding their child nutrition from their own body. I don't even know yeah. why they're, like, mostly focusing on that, too, like, if you're mo- most likely when you're at a restaurant or something that's happening, you're most likely with people. You, there's no reason why you have to focus on that either. Right. And so in that's, that's one thing I was like, you know what? Stop it. You know, mind your business. Let them, let them do them. Let them feed their kid like they, like they need to do. So hundred bucks. Back you were breastfeeding. Your, mom, think, your mom did that to you when you were younger and all that. I think, um, the whole monetizing thing in the whole, Oh yeah, so so back back on topic of that, so so in a sense, nudity is not allowed, but technically breastfeeding is nudity, so it is allowed, but it's filed under health and wellness. Um, mm-hmm. so you kind of, it's, I I think there's a it's it's a special loophole technicality for that kind of thing, and so. Oh, okay. And it's, it'd be filed under medical instead of, so I think, like the pimple popping and all that I think it I think it can be monetized because it's a even though it's like a satisfactory thing like it but it can still be filed under health and wellness and right. where it would be allowed so I think I think that's how they can get away with it and I think uh, um, like the whole monetization thing with YouTube and even with ads in general I think they have definitely shaped the way society is. Oh yeah. <clears throat> because because they're like, okay, so in this sense, I mean, let's use YouTube for example. Like they're a very big example. They're like, well, if you do this, this and this, you're going to get demonetized. So what will YouTubers do? They won't do X Y and B or X Y and Z. Um they won't do those certain things that'll make their videos get demonetized and they lose money. So in the sense that um they are forcing people to be a certain way, you know? Yeah, um, I, I, I see where you're going with that. I think ads have done that to TV also, you know, to these network companies. Like, oh, you know, well, if you say cuss words, we're, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to. Uh, you know, that's, that's one know, thing. They don't allow smoking anymore on TV. Uh-huh, yeah. And so yeah, to like get a, people to quit like smoking, they don't, they don't allow it. Yeah, it's like a society thing. So then these ad, you know, these these places putting out the ads shape shape who what comes out into society. You know, makes the right and wrong. Right. Whatever. Speaking of speaking of ads, you, did you know? Do you know? Um, in grocery stores, 
how mm-hmm. the way the ads are colored for like sales and fresh meat and all that stuff. You know yeah. they're colored that way for a reason. It's uh, no, yellow and red. That. Yeah. Um, they, it, for one, ye- yellow is a really bright attention grabber. And then mm-hmm. red, red is for something like if you're, it directs you to food or something. Let me, let me look it up real quick. Why are... I food? never knew that because um, I worked Bill in a grocery store for two and a half years. When I was in high school. All right. So here it is. The why? Hold on. Here's why it's red. Why is fast food signed all red? Uh, okay. So here, here's why is why is red associated with food? Uh, first, red is a primary color that increases anti antiism something um, and stimulates energy. This quality alone makes it peculiar, peculiar, peculiarly, I can't even say this word, <laughs> peculiarly, I, I don't know, I can't say it. You know what I'm trying to say, though. Peculiarly. Peculiar, no, peculiar, peculiar, <laughs> ha, I can't say it. <laughs> particularly? Huh? No. Peculiarly. Peculiar, yeah, I can't even say it. Uh... <laughs> Appropriate for fast food restaurants. Second, red causes people to react more forcefully. So, you know, you did say something there that I heard you mumble uh, about what? how all fast food signs are red. Uh huh. You know, I get to thinking about it. I think that's true. A lot of them are either white or red color. Okay, here, here's what it is. How does the color of food affect the way? How does the color of food affect the way we eat? Red and yellow are the chef food colors, uh, evoking the taste buds and stimulating the appetite. Both red and yellow are also effective in grabbing attention. Orange, orange, a blend of red and yellow, naturally lends itself to food as an other appetizing color. So, and it shows a sign of okay. Wendy's. Wendy's is red, white, and yellow, and black. Yeah. McDonald's is red yeah. and yellow. In and out, red and yellow. Yeah. Pizza Hut, red, yellow, and black. Uh, and here's a photo. Wow. <clears throat> That's crazy. Uh, um, and here, what color best represents food? Or right, here, what color stimulates it? Uh, while blue is considered an appetite suppressing color, Researchers often point to warm colors as appetite stimulating. According to the ROM and Hass point paint quality, uh, red is a powerful color that increases blood pressure and heart rate, often produces feelings of intimacy, energy, passion, and sexuality. That's that's why all their sale signs are those colors, because they influence you too. So going off the influencing. So next time you go to a store, look at the sale signs. The sale signs will most likely be red and yellow and white, and are either yellow and white or yellow and black. Yellow is the attention grabber; it grabs your attention. And then when you go to the meat products, it'll be um, it'll be red and black and white, and for for the meat. So that was the color stimulates. Stimulate your taste buds. Oh, um, I started doing food reviews. I haven't posted any videos yet because I'm just kind of, I'm building them up. But uh, I don't know if I told you guys, there's this like homemade restaurant here in town called Dale's. And I went there a couple weeks ago and got their country fried steak. I think we did because I argued that chicken's not a steak. That's and, right, uh, our chicken yeah. fried Steak yeah, it's, not yeah, chicken's steak. not a steak. Chicken. So yeah, I did, I did argue this a while back, but uh, so I got it and it was delicious. It was amazing. And so then I'm like, all right, well, I'll go try the Reuben. Reuben was horrible. Um, toast is burnt. Their meat was gooey and chewy. Maybe and the cook just had a whatever. bad day. Probably. Um, but today, uh, I had to go do laundry today because I was out of clothes, and so I walk, uh-huh. I walk into the laundromat naked and start washing my clothes. That's not true at all. I did go. Wow, I, I, I just I wore long little. pants. <laughs> I, I wore jeans and it was 95 out. Oh, so man. that was not fun. 
Um, but I went, I did my laundry and, and I'm like, man, I'm starting to get hungry. Like, and, um, since I've been in an RV, I have to go to a laundromat and it costs seven, seven dollars to do, to do a, two loads of laundry. And cause I, I, I use the double washer and I store everything in there and then the dryer is mm-hmm. big enough for that. And so it, it costs $5 to get the washer going. And then it's 25 cents per five minutes in the dryer and it takes about 40 minutes to dry. So that's yeah. two bucks. And so, yeah. like, as as this thing's getting done, I'm I'm like, man, I'm getting hungry. I wonder if this restaurant's still open. And the restaurant closes at 2. And my clothes get done, and I get them folded, and I look at the clock, and it's one forty-five or one fifty. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, well, this place is right down the street. Hopefully I can get there in 10 minutes because speed limit's only 25. And there's a lot of people walking back and forth across the street. So you have to, like, right. go slow for them and all that. So, um... I find I finally pull into a restaurant at one fifty seven. I'm like, Can I still order food? Like, yeah, I'm like, all right, cool, I'll get it to go so you don't have to worry about it. I'm like, all right, awesome. Do you know what you want? You need a you need a menu? I'm like, yep, I already know what I want. And so I got the country fried steak, country or chicken fried steak, because chicken <laughs> is a steak apparently. But I got country fried steak, uh, baked potato, peas peas came with it. Um and then with that, they also, you get a drink and one run at the salad bar. So I went to the salad bar, got whatever salad they had left, which wasn't much. Um, yeah. And then I got some macaroni salad and some cottage cheese. Uh, and then I just grabbed I just grabbed a Coke bottle from their fridge. They, they had the yeah. the old, old school glass bottles. And oh, sweet. I, I love yeah, those yeah, normally, normally they would give you like a to-go cup, but they were closing. I was like, oh, here, I'll just grab one of these. You, have to do, you don't have to do anything. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. And so I just grabbed the Coke bottle from there. And uh, and so I, I get it home, and I, I set up all my video stuff, and I get everything set up to start my video. And, like, I could just smell it. It's like, it's, it smells so good. And it was it was so good. It was delicious. Like, the, the chicken fried steak was so tender, I used a spoon to cut it. Really? And it clean cuts with a spoon. It was so good. I ate, I ate so much food. I, I ate everything. The um, the salad bar stuff was. I'm sure it was been sitting out for a while, so it really wasn't that good. Right, right. Um, the cottage cheese had a like, kind of a funky taste to it, um, but it, it wasn't curd correctly. But I think it was just because it was it was just out all day. It may have been sitting out all day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sitting out all day. It was sitting in ice, but even still. Um, yeah, still. And the macaroni I, I salad. I like it cold. Yeah, it, it was cold. Uh, but the macaroni salad didn't even look like anybody touched it all day because it was still pretty much full to the top. And right. so it had like it had a weird tang to it. But uh, the baked potato, I, I ate everything on... I had two different boxes. I had a salad bar box, and I had the meal box. Um, and everything in the meal box, I ate every bit of it. Like... I even ate the potato skin. Like I, I took the potato out of the oh, aluminum wow. foil and I cut it up, and it was it was perfect. Like you know how sometimes a baked potato in the middle it'll be hard and chunky and like yeah, it, uncooked, yeah. and it wasn't. It was mm-hmm. cooked all the way through. It was so good. Like it was, and then the the skin was salted. And it was oh, it was it was oh, amazing. I, I would I would I would eat. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post in that video pretty soon once I get it edited together. But it it was good. Bet. And so they that they they brought themselves back from their from their Reuben because that Reuben was horrible. So yeah, it only cost you thirteen dollars. Maybe. And it will be. I don't know, they they have a bunch of stuff. Um, I've been up here for a while and I still have not had bison yet. So I'm gonna have to get something with bison. They have bison hot dogs, but I'm not really sure it's a hot dog. You know what I mean? Bison is kind of a sweeter meat, believe it or not. Is it? It's is kind it? of tangy and it's sweet. It, there's, I, I can't explain it. You have to eat it for yourself. It's kind of like I'm serious. It's kind of got like a cinnamon, cinnamon I don't know how I'd say that. Cinnamon me. See an enemy. See an enemy. Shoot him. Um. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's sweet taste. Is it like venison? Uh, no, I, I haven't venison? tried it since I was a kid. So, since I mean, so, I was a little are you saying probably, are you saying you haven't had buffalo meat in your mouth since you were a kid? 
Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But now it's uh, it was I, actually, I enjoyed I, it. I liked it. I, I want to try. I, I don't think I've, I might have had it before, but I don't remember. I, I've had more of like venison and, um, you know, regular meat, right, normal meats. Right. But uh, I kind of want to. I kind of want to go places where they serve exotic foods. You like, know, I was I w- just about to say that. I would like to travel places and try different foods. Yeah, I want to I wanna eat a bald eagle. What? You, don't, what? you never want to eat an eagle? No, not a bald eagle. Okay, a regular eagle. Golden eagle. I mean, not really. Like Those are supposed to be like hawks and eagles. You're not supposed to mess with them. Why not? Because. I don't know. Or a tiger. I want to eat a tiger. No. No. Why? You're off the wall. You're <laughs> off the wall. There's well no then. way. I mean, I would like maybe some... I don't know. Maybe some fucking... Some like raw sushi, like Japanese style. Oh, I I eat sushi stuff. all the time. I mean, sushi's good. I, mean, I do too. I mean, but like I'm talking like some exotic, maybe exotic like sushi, freaking... like a blowfish. Yeah, like some. Yeah, like speaking of like which, that. did you know blowfish that you have to go to a specialty school? That I, I don't know. I'm sure this is only for Japan, but. Um, for blowfish, you have to go to a specialty school under a special teacher for two years before you can even serve your first blowfish because they're so dangerous and poisonous. Yeah, because they're poisonous, and if you yeah, if you start yeah, the if you cut way, the you wrong thing, them. they yep. you it'll kill you. But <laughs> so yeah, I, that's it's kind of fun. like that's dedication. If you have to go, if you dedicate yourself to go to a specialty school for two years just to serve fish, then you know props to you, man. I mean, yeah, you're hundred percent. I mean, I'm gonna say it now. That's that is. You have a passion. Oh yeah, for sure. The, or we got about. I don't. I don't know. We can wrap this up now if you wanted. To. We got about five or five minutes left or something. Um, I mean that's eight that minutes. Do you have any? Do you have any closing? I wish I could remember what I wanted to talk about Olympus, but I don't remember now. Uh, oh, that uh, really? I've been posting, I've been posting these on here, and somebody that was really mad at me, they commented on it and said, "Your voice makes my brain hurt," and so I replied with, "I replied with thanks. I'm glad I can make your day better, or something like that. Glad I can make your day yeah, more how pleasurable." Is the fe- how is the feedback on the? Good. I get a lot of people are liking it. I don't know if it's because it's Olympus related, because that's the only thing that's been posting. But um, the actual the actual podcast, you know, we'll have to get we'll have to get more feed really on these next few episodes. Um, well, I have the statistics right here. I will go over them. Um, this is in the last. This is the last twenty four hours. I have a total of 85 views, two likes. Um, on podcast one, with the stories, is 25 views. With podcast two, which is the technicalities, has 50 views. And then podcast three, which was the meet me and support one, has 10 views. Um, wow. The top, top, the top listener is you, oddly enough. Uh, top country is United States. Top city is Pompano, Pompano Beach. Um, Plays from the algorithms related seven tracks and one station. So that's the statistics or the analytics, I guess. Um, we'll have episode four going up tomorrow and then five and six the next few days. So that will be that. It looks like Cooper left us. He wrote something. I don't know what he said. Can't I read know, it from here. Go. I was I was Aunt Musty got home. Yeah. I was, <laughs> Dude, I was pissing him off with that. <laughs> so that 
I, don't know, I, I like I like pushing people's buttons. It's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. But um, oh, according to our our support team, one the uh, the podcast me means support team. I mm-hmm. actually spoke to the support team lead today, and told him to go have a listen to it, so he can start getting it back in line the way it should be. Yeah. So that's a good that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, it looks like we got about five more minutes left to this podcast. You want to close with anything? More to come. More to come. More, it's to, getting more to come. Yeah, it, it is. I I have noticed that there are a few things I I noticed that I need to do. I talk really fast, a lot, mm-hmm. and I need to slow down. And um, that's why if you notice, like this, these last two podcasts that we did that. Like I'm talking more slower. Yeah, and we we really did we really did slow it slow down the pace. A little. Oh yeah, yeah, quite a bit. Makes it easier for editing too, because ne- right. not everything's rammed together. But I do I talk super fast, and I noticed that in a lot of podcasts. So, and I'm trying to get a little bit closer to my mic, so, mic so it's a little bit, a little bit um, clear, and the intensity is the same. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Need to, I need to listen to them and see how I sound. Work, and yep, and work on everything. And I try to level out the audio so it kind of works better for everyone. Uh, cool. Lopez actually, and I, I adjust the audio in Discord so we can, we're all right around the same depth or decibels, I guess. Uh, Lopez is really low, so I need to move, move his up quite a bit, but he missed out. I'll have to do it some other time. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have anything to add. We'll be here tomorrow. I guess we're doing. And you know I, what? I guess we're I guess we're doing these daily now, right? Uh, yeah, and yeah. that's rap. Oh, that's that's not rap. <laughs> you gotta you gotta end it with something funny. Like, have you ever watched uh, Hoonigan? No. Uh, you need to watch one of their videos and look at the end of their video. You'll understand no. then. I'll be back. No. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this. This is another IS3 podcast, and we will see you tomorrow.